Hello everyone and welcome to how to derive various critical values for use in Kerbal Space Program for a model that you made in Blender. This is a requested video and I'll try to explain what I can uh, based on a plane though it is of course applicable to other craft that you might make. The plane is just it just happens to be the most complicated thing that you might have because it's got all sorts of wings and all this business. So the first thing we need to do is go to the Edit menu, go to Preferences, and in Add-ons, and I'm sorry it's not ca capturing this right now. In Add-ons, you want to go down and check mark Mesh colon 3 Print Toolbox. And what this is going to do is give you this little menu here, 3 Print. Sorry, I've got a whole bunch of different mods, so they all sort of line up here. But it'll be 3D print toolbox here, and this will give you the ability to find the volume and area of things. So the first thing is fuel tanks, for instance. If you make the fuel tank sort of separate mesh, for instance, let's say, well, uh, we could find out what the maximum volume for fuel tanks in the wing is, uh, right? Because the plane, in this case, would have the fuel tanks in the wing. And so we just select the wing, uh, click volume, and we get 68 uh meters cubed, which is 68,880 liters. So that's the maximum that this volume uh, can take up. And of course, in real life, you'll probably have less than that in the wing. Uh, though for the B-52 might have fuel in the body as well. So yeah, that is a way to check the volume for especially fuel tanks. And if, uh, if you don't have the units, make sure you have the units right. Uh, having it in metric is super helpful. And so in the case of meters cubed, you'll just move the decimal place over three spaces in order to get the liters. And another thing that you can get is the mass of things. Well, at least an approximation, not the exact mass. But for instance, for the wing, we can get the area. The wing mass is basically the skin of the wing and then some structure in the midst of it. But you can get a basic sense of that by getting the surface area. And in this case, we've gotten the surface area here, which is 369 meters squared. And that will be both the top and bottom, by the way. So that's not the wing area. The wing area would be divided by two. And once you've gotten that, you can multiply by the likely material for the wing and the likely material for the wing in this case would be aluminum. And so you get uh, 2.8 tons per meters cubed. I've got that memorized. Aluminum is 2.8 tons per meter cubed and steel is about 8.4 uh, tons per meter cubed. But whatever material you have, you can look up the density of it. And then you also have to decide how thick you want the skin to be, right? This is the area, but there's also thickness. And that's a fungible factor unless you can actually look it up. Uh, one good estimate might be one centimeter uh, for aluminum or for steel, it could be half a centimeter. Uh, for, I mean, for something rugged like the B-52, it can be more than that. But uh, you take this number of area you got here, multiply by the thickness of the material, let's say one centimeter, and then you multiply by the density of the material. In this case, one centimeter is definitely underdoing it because if we take uh, 369.7 times 0.01 and then multiply by 2.8 for aluminum, we get a 10 ton wing, which is undersizing it somewhat. So it's probably more than that. And of course, that's just the skin. There's also the structure inside of it. So you can decide on a factor based on that. That should be considered the lowest it could possibly be and then you can decide how much additional structure you need and create a multiplier. But the point is that you can make everything consistent. In other words, uh, once you've decided on the multiplier for the wing and uh, what kind of thickness you want to go with, uh, you can get the commensurate number for the body, right? You can click the area and you can see the body is 476. Uh, so it's only a little bit heavier than each of the wings. So we can expect that for the B-52, most of the mass of the B-52 is in, actually in the wings. And you can sort of guess that right away, but it'll give you a proportion. And if you've got the total mass of it, for instance, we can look up the total mass of the B-52. We can sum up all of the areas, 369 plus 369 plus 
this 476 plus the vertical stabilizer 90 and plus so we add them all up uh, we subtract out the engine mass you know we just add up all the meshes we can get the area of this mesh as well uh, we subtract out the actual engine mass because we have to add those in and maybe some allowance for the landing gear and then once we've got the total area we can divide it up based on the mass that we are expecting so if the body happens to be about 20 percent of the total then for the total mass that we read in wikipedia or whatever we can divide that by uh, and make it 20 percent of that make the body 20 percent of that i mean so it's a little bit complicated but that's one thing in Kerbal Space Program, so now we're going to go on to center of mass. That's just an estimate. A lot of this stuff is just estimates. The center of mass is a complicated issue because for cockpits and the interior of the pods, we want the Kerbals to be at zero, zero. So zero, zero, though, is where Kerbal Space Program or Unity by default places the center of mass. So we've got this conflict here. We want the Kerbals to be there because the IVA view is placed there. It just is. Don't try and move it. Uh, whatever IVA you create, you want it at zero, zero. So that's why the B-52 at zero, zero, that's where the cockpit is. So we are going to have to, in the configuration, move the center of mass to where it ought to be. But how do we figure out the center of mass? Well, we go up to Object, Set Origin, origin to center of mass surface. And that will actually tell you where the center of the surface area is. Now we use the surface area to estimate the mass of the thing. And so now we've moved the center of this mesh to where the center of that center mass is. And it is a little bit down in the z-axis and obviously quite far back from the cockpit area. And we're probably not going to want to mess with the z-axis too much. Um, it is important to remember that once you bring it into Unity and into Kerbal Space Program, the z-axis is actually reversed. So when you see a negative number here, it's positive. And when you see a positive number here, it's negative. And I think the x-axis works the same way, uh, I forget, uh, because they use a different rule for the orientation of the coordinate system. Um, whether your coordinates are quite right here as far as the y-axis is concerned is depending on how you flipped it. In this case, uh, in Kerbal Space Program, the nose is always in positive y and the tail is negative y. So this is actually 180 degrees around. And so we are going to want the center of mass moved negative 19.48 meters. So in the configuration file, there'll be a line COM offset. And our COM offset is going to be, I'm sorry, I'm not showing this. I just wanted to make a quick video on this. COM offset is equal to negative uh, 0, comma, negative 19.48, comma, 0. So in that case, it's not going to move the X or the Z, but it's just going to move the Y further back. So then the center mass for the body will be in the right place. Uh, by the same token, it's uh, sort of convenient to have the zero point. And then once you've got that location, you can move it back. So here we can go object, set origin, uh, set or uh, set origin to 3D cursor if you've got it at zero, zero. And so in order to set the 3D cursor, we can go zero, 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 or we can just apply location. So we can move the 3D cursor to where we want the, the origin, or we can just go control A, apply location and I'll go back to zero 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 and so it you want the origin to be at zero 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 when you import it into unity and Kerbal space program and then you'll just move the com back not the origin of the mesh this is all very complicated but that's how it is now for the wings you'll note that I have their origin where they attach to the body not where their center of mass is and that is a good principle and when we import them for into Unity, we would like to move them up. So what's going to happen is you're going to create an attachment point for the wing on the body, an attachment node, and you'll create the, that attachment node at this location, keeping in mind that some of the axes might be reversed, especially the Z. 
in the case of the X, of course, they'll be symmetrical. But we're going to move the wing so that its origin is at 0, 0 here. Now that means that we are also going to have to make a COM offset for it. And we find the COM offset the same way. Object set origin, center mass, it's back here. We don't necessarily have to move the center of mass in the X direction for it. Really, the only important thing is to make sure its center mass is uh, in the right location in Y, because that de determines the stability of the plane. So we are going to want to move it back. So we'll have a COM offset equals 0, comma, a negative 6.767, and comma, 0 because we're not going to move the Z, unless you want to move the Z. I mean, you can move, uh, put the center mass exactly in this location if you want. Um, it probably won't matter too much. Uh, but yeah, the, and the important thing is the Y location. And that determines whether the center mass is too far forward or too far back. So ultimately, though, we are not going to have the center of mass there. We're going to move it back. We'll just do apply location, or I'm just going to undo this and move this all the way back. Okay, and the reason we want to make sure that the origin for the wing is at 0, 0, 0 is so that when we write the configuration for the wing, that we tell it's, it to attach at 0, 0, 0, but also that means that it's, when its surface attaches, if we ever want to surface attach it, it'll attach in that location. Otherwise, you'll automatically try to surface attach in a different place, which we don't want. So yeah, the attachment node will be on the body and the same for the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer. So on the body, we'll have a node at this location for the vertical stabilizer. And then on the, for the vertical stabilizer itself, we are going to move it to zero, zero, zero. And it'll be like that. Or it could be uh, off to one side or another, depending on whether you're using FAR or not. That's a whole complicated other business. So that's how to figure out the attachment nodes for a model. I'm going rather quickly. I don't know what kind of detail we want to get into this. But, but basically, I just wanted to make a quick video on this. And if there are other questions, I'll, I'll field them. But We've got volume, we've got mass, we've got where the center of mass is, and we've got where the attachment nodes end up being. And again, in this case, all the attachment nodes will be on the body, except there's the engine ones. Oh yes, these are a special problem. Let's say you've got a part that you've got attached to the body, but then you've got other parts that need to attach to the wing. Well, then you're gonna have to subtract out their location from the wing's location in order to figure out where your attachment nodes go on the wing because we gotta move the wing to zero, zero, zero. So we'll take the 10.662 minus 1.0909 to get the X location for the engine pod relative to the wing and same for Y and Z. But you're gonna have to keep in mind the signs because they might change in unity. In general, for a plane in the SPH, the nose is in positive Y, the tail is in negative Y, the bottom of the plane is in positive Z, the top of the plane is in negative Z, and I always mix up the left and right. <laughs> so whatever works for the left and right is fine. Hopefully they're symmetrical. So, which is why I always mix them up because they're symmetrical. But now, what about the wing area? Let's say you're actually doing far which my condolences, uh, you can measure the wing using this measure tool. You can get the cord. This is the cord. There's the root cord and then there's the tip cord. There are a few quantities for far that you'll have to write in. First is the mean cord and I think that was MAC. And in that you're going to have to take the average of the root cord and the mean cord. So you go, uh, sorry, the tip cord. And so you're going to take this, add to that, divide by 2. The next quantity you'll need is the span. Oops, we, we, we don't want to do that just yet. Uh, the span. And the span is just the length in this direction. And so that will be labeled B2 in the far configuration. 
that's that length. You can get uh, use these lengths for other things too if you need to measure things. And so you just drag them out. And there's also the taper ratio. And the taper ratio is uh, the tip chord divided by the root chord. So this number over here divided by that number over there. So that's another quantity. And then there's the wing sweep, which is the angle that's swept back. That's a little bit complicated. You'll want one point there. I really want to get rid of that one. One point on a horizontal line, either horizontal line. And one point right in the middle of the root chord. And here we get 32 degrees. And so it'll tell you that angle there. And that'll be the wing sweep. Be careful to do this in orthographic view, otherwise the lines will not be planar to the wing. They'll be all over the place. So make sure you're in orthographic view. And the same sort of thing can be done for the horizontal stabilizer. So that's not that now that's not the span. The span is strictly horizontal, remember that. Um, this we're trying to get the angle. And we need a horizontal baseline. And set this marker to the middle of that, set this one to the middle of that, and the sweep is about 21 degrees. So those are the quantities for wings. And I'm just trying to remember if there's anything else that we need to measure the quantities of. But the measure tool can help you with quite a few things, and aside from that, there's a 3D print toolbox and the set origin thing. So if there are any other questions for how to measure stuff in Blender, please ask. Uh, but I just wanted to make a quick video of this since somebody asked, and I hope it's been helpful. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.